Okay, we'll go over to this side of the table and I have a 176 gear that Robert broke, I don't know, a couple years ago. I've already removed one of the gears. Here it is, you can definitely see the tooth damage here. In fact, every one of the gears have at least one tooth knocked off of it. Uh, the ring gear also has some damage. And uh, I've already ground down the tops of these um, uh, gear pins. And I have one more to grind. You can use a uh, cutoff wheel, a die grinder. The best thing though is to use an angle electric grinder that has an abrasive wheel on it. And what you want to do is you want to take all of the stamping off. The, you know, these are kind of riveted into place. So you want to ground those down flush with the back part of this um, uh, you know, output shaft uh, hub, I guess you would call it. And you're going to touch uh, a little bit of that area. You're going to shine it up, but you want to try to keep that to a minimum. You just only want to cut that down flush. So we'll, we'll do that one real quick. Okay, I'll put my safety glasses on. I'm also going to take this uh, one and a quarter uh, galvanized pipe, put it on the output shaft, just like that. That'll protect the uh, machined part of the shaft. So sometimes when you're you know, using the grinder, you can accidentally kind of go up there and you might you know, put some burrs on there. So that kind of protects that. I've already got the abrasive wheel on my grinder. And what we want to do is to take that stamping away, but try not to take too much of the material off of the hub. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we want to go ahead and hammer these pins out. The way I do it is I put the uh, planet on a couple blocks of wood and then stick it down in a uh, uh, something like a drain pan because when you knock these out, there's some you know little needle bearings that'll fall out and you don't want them flying all over the shop. Okay, I'll take my 516 uh, drift punch and uh, knock these pins out. What I want to do is remove the short gears first. Once I take the short gears out, I can remove that sun gear and the washer behind it. Now this is an interference fit, so therefore you're going to have to hammer it all the way out. It's going to be tight all the way out. And understand that, you know, these uh, um, pins may have little burrs on it which can damage the needle bearings in there. Also, no matter how careful you are, you may slip and you know your punch may wind up damaging one of the, one of the needles too. So once you get all of these uh, needles and there's you know there's little uh, uh, spacers to check them for damage. If there's any question about it, these uh, spacers and needle bearings are available and you would want to replace them. There we go. Take the gear out. And, you know, the little needles might fall out just like that. That's fine. Let's take the other short one out. All right. Now, when I take this gear out, then the sun gear will fall out from underneath. So I'll put my hand under here. And there we go. There's the sun gear and the washer in behind it. Now along with the needle bearings and those spacers, you'll see a couple of these uh, thrust washers here that have the little, uh, little tang on it. There's three of those. They go uh, underneath these short gears. There's also more, some more thrust washers, but they are tied to these long gears, so they have to come out first. Okay, now let's get the long gears out. Okay, we got a mess here now. 
Okay, you see what we have here. We've got these long gears and, you know, of course, the little needle bearings and spacers that were in those. You have these thrust washers that have a kind of a figure eight look to them. And just go ahead and get the rest of this stuff out. There's also some more of these thrust washers that are on the long side of those long gears. And now we want to take all of, all of these pieces out and clean this planet up real good and uh, get it ready for rebuilding. You have three of the figure eight type thrust washers. You have six of the thrust washers that have the little tangs on them. Of course, you have the thrust washer that goes behind the sun gear. You have three of these wide spacers and you have 12 of the shorter spacers and a whole bunch of needle bearings. Understand the three shorter gears use 20 needle bearings a piece and the long gears use 40 needle bearings in two rows. And of course, there are six of the pins that we drove out. Now, the only thing that I want to check on the planet is on the inside. I want to look down inside the planet carrier and take a look at this bushing. This is the bushing that the input shaft, the end of the input shaft rides on. I've looked at this one and it's in good condition. But if you needed to replace it, they are replaceable. I want to show you how to do that. So I've got an old uh, 182 gear set that I've uh, taken the gears out of it and I've put it over here on my portable bench and I'll show you how to remove that bushing. Okay, I've taken the planetary and output shaft and clamped it on in this bench. I take a quarter inch pipe thread uh, tap and run it down in here and tap out the bushing. Actually, I've already done it. I, I just ran it down until it bottomed out. Then I have this quarter inch nipple, it's two inches long, put a T on it, and I'll thread that right down into the bushing. Just like that. Now if you happen to have a slide hammer that has one of these two jaw uh, little uh, pullers on it, you can see you could probably put the uh, uh, puller you know, right in there and then just slide hammer it out. If you didn't have this, but you did have an assortment of these, uh, you know, ladies foot uh, pry bars, we should be able to remove this bush and let's see if we can. I've got this one uh, and, and, you know, two different sizes. This smaller one really is not what I want. I really need two of this larger size, but let me see if we can get it out. We'll just put one in one side of the T fitting and the other one in the other and then just spread by um, pry bars out. There you go. Get a little different bite on it. There we go. There you go. And there's the bushing. Now what you would do is you'd take your new bushing and just put it on the end of your input shaft and then put it right down in there and drive it home. Um, I think if you just use a brass hammer, you wouldn't damage your uh, input shaft, or you could also use your uh, shop uh, press if you have one. Now, when you reassemble these planets, you can reuse the old pins. You just simply, uh, you know, press them back into place or hammer them back into position, and the part where you ground down, you could simply put two tack welds there. I don't like that. I would rather use the aftermarket pins. I'll show you those right now. All right, here's one of the aftermarket pins. On one side you have this shoulder and there's also a little uh, uh, roll pin pressed in through uh, one corner of it. On the other side you have a screw with a washer. And what you would do, you would insert this pin just like the original and the little roll pin here needs to line up with the groove that's in the bottom of the planet carrier right here. Then on the other side, you put the uh, screw and the washer down into the pin. 
like that. And what you'll do, you need to torque it down, but usually you just go a little bit snug because if you torque it too much, you'll actually crush the carrier slightly and it may interfere with the uh, gear turning correctly. So you might want to do a dry run. You give it a nice firm turn, make sure that the uh, gear turns okay, take it back out, put a drop of uh, red Loctite on it, and then run it down snug permanently, and then install the rest of them the same way. Now earlier in the day, I took this aftermarket pin and I drove it down through one of these holes and I discovered there is a slight interference right in the area where this shoulder meets the carrier uh, face. I found that the diameter of the shoulder on this pin was a little bit too large and it interfered with this raised portion of the carrier housing. So what I did, I cut a little bit of that edge off. Here it is, right there. Took that little bit of material off. Now it lays down in there and it misses that raised portion. So check the one that you're working on. You may have to make a modification the same way as I did. Now it just so happens that Robert had another planetary that he broke a couple years ago, but this is a rebuilt aftermarket unit. It has a uh, special output shaft made for racing only. It only has the single lube hole. It doesn't have the extra holes for the governor and for the you know speedometer drive. So this is a race only unit. It's also welded to the carrier back here, much stronger. Of course, because the gears were uh, broken, there's some superficial wounds on the carrier, but there really isn't any damage. Now, this one also has removable pins, but it uses this retainer to hold the pins instead of screws. So this is the unit we'll uh, put the 180 racing gears in. Okay, on the table here, you see I have the aftermarket gears. You have the three long gears, the three short gears, the two sun gears, and the ring gear. And I also have, uh, you know, the aftermarket pins that go into the aftermarket case that we're going to rebuild. First thing we want to do is install the needle bearings into the gears. All right, let's start with the long gears first. Remember, there are two rows of uh, needle bearings and they're separated by one of the wide spacers. There's three of these wide spacers. Now, I like to set that spacer in the middle, so I'm going to create a little standoff by using this uh, little 10 millimeter socket. Put the spacer on top of it like that, then put the gear on top of the spacer. Now that the, uh, when I put the uh, needles in, they won't go all the way to the bottom. To make the needles stay in place, you need to put a little bit of wheel bearing grease or some assembly lube. You can use uh, petroleum jelly. I think you'll find that petroleum jelly isn't quite viscous enough, so I'm going to use a little bit of wheel bearing grease, and then I need to put 20 of those needles in. And when you put the last needle in, you'll have to kind of wedge it in there. It'll be kind of a tight fit. There we go. Then we top it off with, you know, one of the little thin spacers. Just like that. I put a little bit more grease on it. Kind of glue it in there. Then I'll carefully flip it upside down. Remove the socket. Glue this side up with some uh, grease and put 20 rollers on this side. Put the last one in. Take one of the short spacers, put on the top. Put a little bit more lube on it. Kind of grease it down, kind of glue it up. Set that aside and do the other two the same way. All right, here's a little trick for you. Once you get that first row of needle bearings in position, take your gear pin, drop it down in there, and now you have a mandrel to kind of support the second set of needles. I find that uh, you know the needles go in there a little bit easier. Of course, they can't fall down through the other side, and you know in which case you'd have to fish them back out. It also looks like the needles stay upright a little better. 
and it's certainly something you might uh, might want to give that a try. Okay, now let's do the short gears. You already know what to do. We put a short spacer in, 20 of the needle bearings, and another short spacer on top of that. There you go. Do the other two the same way. Over here at my portable table, I have the planet carrier and output shaft. And what we want to do is install the long gears first. To do that, though, I need to install a couple thrust washers. Remember the little thrust washers that have the little tang? Well, that needs to go on the bottom. Okay, and that little tang is going to fit in a hole that's on the floor of the carrier. So I'll put a little bit of grease on the thrust washer and glue it into position. Now the figure eight type thrust washer fits on the top, on the bottom side. Just remember there's little slots on one side. The slots always face the gear. And understand it'll fit right under here just like that and it'll be three of them, of course. You have one in this position, one in this position, and one in this position. I'll take a little bit of grease, put on the back, and glue that to the top. And if it falls down, that's all right. I'll just have to uh, reposition it. Okay, now I'll carefully take the long gear and slide it into position. And I'll take my little finger and make sure my thrust washer on top is lined up. Then I'll use a little tool that I've made. This is a four inch long quarter inch pipe nipple. I've cut the threads off of one side. It's a little bit smaller than the gear pin, so it makes a real good alignment tool. Drop it down through there, reach underneath, make sure my thrust washer on the bottom is lined up, and then have the tool go all the way through. Now I know that the gear is pretty well lined up. Now it's time to actually put the gear pin in position. Okay, this particular style of uh, gear pin has a little slot made in it. That's for that little retainer, and it'll need to be lined up. So as I install it in the planet carrier, I'll show you that. Okay, the pin should go down easily until it gets near the bottom. That's where the interference fit is down here. And remember I said the slot needs to line up so you can put that retainer in place. So I have this old hacksaw blade that's broken and I put that in the slot and then I can kind of rotate that pin and use the hacksaw blade as an alignment tool to make sure that the slot is pointing toward the center of the uh, planetary. So in other words, when I put the pin in this position, the slot will be facing that way and the, you know, the hacksaw blade will be like that. When it's in this position, the hacksaw blade would be like this, like so. All right, now I want to tap that pin down a little bit with, uh, say, a brass hammer. You could also put this in your shop ram. But what I want to do is I don't want to bring that slot down flush with the back of this carrier. I want to be shy maybe a 32nd of an inch. Otherwise, it'll be very difficult to try to get that retainer in place later on. So let me tap it down with the, my little brass hammer here and kind of keep an eye on it. And I think that's as far as I want to go. Now I'll put the other two long uh, gears in place. Okay, right about now you may have discovered something, and that is those little um, figure eight thrust washers, they need to go between the holes that are closer together. If you look at the distance between these holes, you'll see two of them, you know, a pair is kind of closer together. The next two are a little bit further apart. If you have the thrust washers in the wrong pair, you'll find that the hole doesn't line up. So I've looked down in here and I do have them in the correct position. Now I'll go ahead and put the uh, gear pins in position, making sure that the slot is lined up toward the center of the carrier.
Okay, now we want to put the short uh, gears in, but remember, before we put the short gears in, I have to put that sun gear, that input sun gear, because you remember earlier, those short gears actually capture the sun gear in position. Now, on regular 176 gears, there's no top and bottom to the gear or the sun gear. However, with these aftermarket straight cut gears, the input sun gear does have a top and a bottom. The smooth side will go down against that thrust washer, and this countersunk side will face up, and that's where that Torrington bearing will go. This countersunk area is there because these gears are slightly wider than the uh, 176 gears. So let me put the, um, the little uh, thrust washer in place. I'll put a little bit of grease on it. We'll, we'll you know, lube all of this up with transmission fluid once, once it's all together. All right, then I'll take the input sun gear, remember, smooth side down, and I'll kind of thread it between those long gears. Okay, and now I'll start putting the short gears in. Now there's those same thrust washers that have the little tangs on them, but in this case there's no hole. You just simply have the tangs toward the center of the carrier. And put it in here like that. And then slide one of my gears in position. Kind of line that thrust washer up. I'll use my little tool and I'll look down in there and see what I got. Take a screwdriver and kind of line it up a little bit and then tool goes right down in there. I'll put the other two in. Okay, now I'll take the uh, lock retainer and put it in position, line up the three screw holes. Might use a small Phillips or a scratch all. Then take the three screws and put them in there, oh, just about two or three threads for now. Okay, now I want to carefully tap each one of these pins down so the retainer is flush with the uh, back of the planet body. Now I'll remove each one of these little screws, put one drop of red uh, thread lock on them, and then torque them down. Okay. Drop the Torrington bearing in position, squirt some transmission fluid on it, and it's ready to go.